Hello and welcome to the simplified development using the FileNet GraphQL API demo. GraphQL is an open source data query and manipulation language. It was originally developed by Facebook and is now hosted by the nonprofit Linux Foundation. GraphQL provides an efficient and powerful approach of developing web APIs, where clients can define exactly what data to return, thus improving response times. Let's first explore the GraphIQL or Graphical user interface. Graphical is a tool provided by GraphQL which provides an in-browser IDE for exploring GraphQL schemas. Let's start off by writing a query to retrieve folders. We use the object store name of GQL OS and specify the focus corp top level folder. We'll use our query to retrieve the focus corp subfolders. From the graphical UI, we'll use the panel on the left hand side to write out queries or mutations Mutations are operations that modify server-side data. To retrieve the folder within the Focus Corp top-level folder, we'll use a query called Folder and specify the repository ID. We'll set that to the object store, which is called GQL OS. Next, we'll specify the folder we want to search by using the argument called Identifier. In our example, we specify the Focus Corp root folder. Notice the type ahead and autocomplete feature where we can choose and explore different options available to us in our schema to pre-populate our query. Let's return the ID and name of the Focus Corp folder to validate. And then the name of the subfolders. Let's execute this query by pressing the play button. Here are the results, listing the folders that we previously saw in the Navigator UI. In this example, we'll use the folder query again, this time retrieving the properties of the document contained in a folder. We'll return the ID and value for each document property. Here are the results. Notice all the property values were returned. Rather than retrieving data we don't need, we can modify a query to return the data that is necessary. In this query, we'll retrieve the custom properties applicant name, loan type, and loan amount. Executing our query this time, we can see that we have retrieved only the properties that we have specified. Applicant name, loan type, and loan amount. Unlike traditional APIs, we can shape our requests retrieving only the data that is necessary, allowing us to improve performance. We'll now look at a mutation, which again is an operation that modifies server-side data. In this example, we create a mutation that creates a folder called loan1234. In the same operation, we also create a loan application document with properties for applicant name, loan type, loan amount, and submit a date. Upon execution, we see that the loan123 folder was created along with the document. Here's the document ID and the custom properties. Note that if there was an error creating the document, the entire operation would have been rolled back, including the creation of the folder. Using the Navigator user interface, we can now see the loan123 folder, along with the document and associated custom properties. Let's now take a look at how the FileNet GraphQL API is used with the Content Event Action webhook. Webhooks deliver content data to other services in real time based on a triggering event. In our use case, we'll update Slack so that HR is notified when an employee onboarding document is created or updated. Events can be based on folders, documents, metadata, as well as other objects in the repository. Detailed information on content event webhooks, including examples, can be found on the IBM Knowledge Center. For our use case, we'll use the example entitled Creating an Event Action with a Subscription. Let's copy this example for our use case. This will allow us to create an event action to call Slack when an HR onboarding document is created or updated. Here's the updated example in the graphical UI. We have updated the example by specifying the webhook URL for the event action and set the subscription to create an update. 
We'll now press the play button to create the content event webhook. Without having to import Java or JavaScript code in the FileNet, we have used the GraphQL API to register the event action. Whenever an onboarding document is created or updated, including property updates, Slack will receive the update and alert HR with a message. Let's now test the Slack integration we created using the GraphQL API. We'll first add a document into the FileNet repository. Now let's go to Slack, where we see a message indicating that a document was created. Let's now update a property in the document in the repository. Let's set the status from pending to accepted. In Slack, we now see a message that a document was updated. Using the FileNet GraphQL API webhook, we have now enabled Slack users to see updates in the FileNet repository, allowing them to see the relevant information necessary to perform the job function. In this demonstration, we saw how easy and flexible it was to use the FileNet GraphQL API. We also used the GraphQL API to create content event webhooks to allow external services like Slack to receive real-time updates rather than having to pull the repository. Unlike traditional APIs, GraphQL makes rapid product iterations on the front end possible, as it allows developers to make changes on the client side without having to update server code. This way, developers can deprecate fields that applications no longer use in order to improve API performance. A common problem developers face with REST APIs is over and under fetching and round tripping. GraphQL allows you to specify the exact data that is required, including combining different entities or endpoints to avoid these issues, and thereby improving performance. FileNet continues to support existing APIs such as CMIS, Web Services, Java, and .NET. Thank you for watching this demonstration.